Hello. My patrons recently voted for me to give them a tour of my hobby room. So this video is that. I'm Jordan, this is Jordan Sorcery, and today you're touring the Sorcerer's Tower. Okay, so not so much a tower as it is a suburban front room, but let me tell you, there is magic within these four walls. I just haven't gotten around to assembling and painting most of it. So a couple of quick points before we begin. As much as this is my hobby room and studio, this is also Martha's favorite room. She spends a lot of time in here and she is multier than a box of Special K. So you will have to forgive us if you spy cat hair or dust and such on this otherwise spotless tour. Just. You know, don't judge me too harshly for the things you see here today. Lots of bits of nonsense and incomplete projects and still sealed stuff in here that I just need to get round to one day. We moved into this house about nine months ago and it was a bit of a downsizing operation. As I worked from home and had a ridiculous collection of games, I claimed the front room and it is amazing because it means that there's plenty of space for the furniture I already had, but it also means I've got a pretty awkward bay window situation at the front and a desk that's designed to fit in a corner that doesn't really fit anywhere else. So we'll come back to that though. That bay window also makes it really super tough to get good lighting, which is why I film most of my videos at night, and also why many of my videos have really bad lighting, because it's, it's tough to control at times. So this at the back is bay number one of three. I got these units from Made back when that was still a thing. I absolutely love them, mostly because they are big and sturdy and have deep enough shelves to fit the larger game boxes. This bay houses a selection of different titles. Let's work from the top to the bottom. Up on the very top shelf is Star Trek Adventures from Modiphius. These guys have to be on top because I picked up the Borg Cube box set, which is absolutely incredible, but it's also very, very big and doesn't fit anywhere else. I've got a fair few of the books for Star Trek Adventures, as I love 90s Trek quite a lot, and this game does a great job of letting you play in that era. I've really enjoyed putting together episodic campaigns and the parties and PCs. They all get to really work together it feels very collaborative and very much like episodes of Star Trek. So I I'm a big fan of this game. Sneaking up here in the corner as well is Lost Patrol and my Underworld's boards in this Shade Spire box. This pretty much never sees play. I've got loads of the actual expansion boards and tokens and all that sort of stuff, but I've just put them all into one to save on storage space. On the next shelf down, we've got a load of random books and game supplements. So on the left is Warhammer Fantasy and Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay and a bit of 40k and just a random assortment of books that are in no particular order. On the right hand side, we've got a load of Necromunda books. Probably too many Necromunda books for any one person to ever need in real life, but I really love the look and feel of these books. I enjoy spending a bit of time looking at it. I, I kind of see it almost like role-playing supplements for when I eventually run a 40k campaign because I think Necromunda is such a fantastic setting. And then the box in the middle, this one is a fun one. I think this has got my incomplete collection of Warhammer campaign boxes. They used to release campaign supplements for Warhammer Fantasy Battle. These would have a series of linked scenarios where each scenario's outcome would affect the forces and the objectives in the subsequent games. I really, really love these boxes. They're just so much fun, so full of character. They speak of the era of the game that they come from. I have some ideas around something similar for myself that I might explore at some point, so there's a little tease. But yeah, Warhammer Fantasy campaign boxes, just terrific stuff. Below them, we've got a shelf of role-playing games. My unplayed obsession is Legend of the Five Rings. So I've played a lot of the CCG and the LCG for L5R, and a little bit of the first edition of the role-playing game. I've never gotten to actually play, in anger, the Fantasy Flight Games 5th edition. It's never been at my table, despite me having everything that they produced for it and I absolutely adore the books. I think they did a really good job of updating it while keeping the spirit alive, making it a bit more progressive and more inclusive, and I just enjoy reading these books, but I definitely want to get this one played at some point. I'd love to do a proper 
L5R campaign. Here is Dark Matter. I love this game and I have for years. It's just a brilliant X-Files style horror game. It really captures that zeitgeist of the late 90s, all of that paranoia, that technology, the internet barely being a thing just yet. It's a really fun game for investigating spirits and ghosts and goblins, folktales or paranoid sci-fi stuff and conspiracies and aliens, basically anything you'd see in the X-Files. This game deserves a full 45 minute deep dive video that everybody should go and watch after this tour if they haven't already. And then finally on this row is Dragonlance Fifth Age, a noble failure from the dying days of TSR when they tried to make a card rather than dice driven Dungeons and Dragons. It's got a focus on story driven adventures, these are beautiful boxes. All of the expansions were designed to look like they were in these big tomes and there's like smaller books and maps inside them. It just didn't take off because of a lot of conflicting factors, all of which are explored in another very worthy video. The shelf beneath that is the rest of the L5R collection, a ton of the living card game, which is an excellent if stressful game, as well as some of the other games that are set in the world of Rakugan. So there's Ninja, which is a really fun hidden movement game where one player player is trying to infiltrate a fortress to complete a secret objective and the other player is trying to find them. There's some first edition L5R RPG sets here as well. Tomb of Ayuchaban which is an absurd and over the top dungeon that I absolutely adore but would never want to play although they are releasing a new version of that very soon so I'm looking forward to reading that. And the City of Lies expansion which is probably the gold standard for city based campaign settings. Just incredible detail and immersion. Fantastic, just really, really good. And then down here at the bottom, there are two shelves of GW box sets. I picked up the Kill Team stuff because I really like the models and I think the terrain is wonderful. I, I love terrain. Then there is Dreadfleet, which is absolutely beautiful. There's a secondhand Cursed City box that I picked up recently that I've been raiding for my Marienburg project and taking some of the heroes out. And probably too many boxes of unassembled minis. Necromunda, I've spent quite a lot of time putting that terrain together. I've got a really fun board now and I've got a couple of gangs already assembled. Not painted because that's the thing that I fear the most, but I'm currently working on a new Ogrins gang as part of a Tale of Four Gangers over on the Hazard Stripes channel. So I'm really looking forward to getting some more play out of my Necromunda collection. Right, let's rapidly get through Bay 2 or we will be here all day. These big grey boxes house my unbuilt and sadly sometimes unopened purchases. These are my chests of shame. There's a lot of Necromunda stuff in there as I really got into collecting it. Some of these boxes also have other fun stuff in. There's a brick of X-Files CCG cards that I have yet to open. Uh, I really love playing the X-Files CCG. If you've never played it, it's great. It's kind of a guess who sort of solve the mystery. You have to collect all the clues to work out what your opponent's X-Files is. Awesome yet awkward to store card buildings from the tragedy of Macdeath are inside one of these boxes, some of the Necromunda terrain, and just other bits of random collection stuff. We've also got on here some of my classic GW games like Man of War and Hero Quest. Oh, and like a thousand more L5R cards in these storage boxes at the top. Down at the bottom, there are also these compartments with doors which are perfectly sized to accommodate two Feldherr FSLB310 storage boxes in each. I'm a big fan of Feldherr and I love when they make inserts that fit into the original GW box, but these are the standard boxes where you can select what sort of shape and size of foam that you want or need. I have filled these boxes with Tau, with rats, and with assorted characters for various game systems. I've got some Bushido, got some L5R minis, and some other random Warhammer bits and bobs. And then this is my work in progress tray, which is too embarrassing to share in detail. So let's move on very quickly. Bay number three. This one has some fun stuff on it, I think. Up top is the complete collection of The Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition by French publisher Sans Detour. These sets are genuinely incredible, really beautiful and full of amazing handouts and props. The publisher actually got into a lot of trouble because they stopped paying the license fee for the game to Chaosium. So these are all long gone now, but I like them a lot. And in case you are wondering, I have studied French when I bought these so that I could read them, but I have barely used my French in quite a few years now. 
and almost certainly cannot speak it anymore. So, you know, en investissement judicieux. On top of L'Appel de Cthulhu, there is a mother box, which has got a lot of Batman the miniatures game miniatures in it. And there is also a big pirate ship, which is a secret, so don't look at that. Below that, we have some board games. I really like Rising Sun by Simon, and Lords of Waterdeep is a big favourite of mine and my group. The reboot of Oko by Red Joker was a Kickstarter that I may have gotten too deep into, but the reason was that I really, really like the original Oko game published by Hasgard many years ago. It's a fun skirmish battle game. It featured all of the beautiful art by French comics artist Hub. I've got a complete set of the Oko comics and they are just fantastic. So I was trying to recapture some of that with the rebooted game, which it's it's not quite it's not quite the same, but it's still fun. Then here is Blackstone Fortress expansions and some FFG GW games that I think are all ace. And then it's Warhammer Quest. All of the versions of the game, including the original, but my original copy is in these KS multi-cases because I sold my childhood version in a fit of foolishness and had to rebuy the components for the game separately over time because I didn't want to take out a personal loan just to do it. But I still have yet to replace the original box. And I don't have most of the original miniatures either. But that's basically my punishment for getting rid of the game in the first place. For which I have no real excuse other than the foolishness of youth. The back wall of the room has some prints of the incredible Rokugan maps by artist Francesca Berald. As you may have spotted, I put these up myself and they are perfectly level. It's just the light playing tricks on you. There's two Stanley Fat Max mobile toolboxes as well. These house a load of random playing pieces and paints and stuff like that. On top of one of them sits Martha's winter basket. It's very warm, it's near a radiator, and when she's in it, she gets to pretend like she is defending Middenheim when she's asleep. I do need to give these toolboxes a good sort through and an organize though. I've kind of let them get a bit chaotic inside. I like having them on wheels as it means they can be brought over to the gaming table in the center of the room and they can then provide extra surfaces for rule books and for dead minis to be placed on. Plus, they make for very smooth dolly shots. The gaming table is a big round one and beneath it there are more things and more dust. These big metal gun cases at the back house pretty much an entire MDF Gotham City that I built for the Batman Miniatures game. I really like the board I built, but I don't play the game anymore, really. So now they live in these, surrounded by packing peanuts, and they mock me mercilessly. These big plastic containers are my comics collection. There are six in total, but about two years ago, I decided to be super disciplined and to reduce my comics collection considerably. So now there's actually two more of them as well. Eight in total. And this here is the weird area of more things. At the bottom, there's a load of equipment that I use for the channel, microphones, lint roller to pick up Martha's endless fur, the kind of technical gear that I use for videos and stuff. There's a load of L5R fiction, there's parts of a Marienburg class landship, and a load of white dwarfs, journals, and other GW periodicals. I used to have a massive, almost complete collection of White Dwarf that, like Warhammer Quest, I got rid of when I thought I was the Fonz and not Richie, and I can tell you that right now I just feel like Potsy. But that's why I've been building up my collection of White Dwarfs again over time. Up top is some fun terrain, including a recently acquired 3D jigsaw of Tortuga that might turn up again in a video or pictures somewhere. I have a little display cabinet that I intend to fill with miniatures as soon as I paint some more. Uh, what else do we have? Well, there is this mammoth box that I got for my Marienburg army but there'll be plenty of time in the future to talk about that in a dedicated video. And then there's loads of books and games on here, more books here, some books here and an imprisoned elemental here. This piece of art is by Dean Beatty. It's one of my favorites, just a load of X-Men doing a big fight. And then of course, there is the desk. Martha has another bed here, which you will have seen in videos, though she also enjoys to sleep on the windowsill. There are the books that I have currently got up on my display shelf but I do keep meaning to update and reorganize these. These tend to be the books that I'm reading at the moment or that I'm researching for particular projects and videos or that I just love so much and I wanna have them close to hand to inspire me as I think about the games that I love. 
And then here is my view when I'm filming a video. I don't tend to use an auto cue, so I read the script from my computer and then just speak it to camera about 400 times until I get a take that has all the right words in that are in the right order, and then I can move on. I probably ought to revisit my camera and lighting settings, but the last time I updated those, I basically turned my entire room into a pitch black cave and was out of focus for a couple of videos. So we'll see if I can get my head around that. Okay, let's draw a line under the tour there for now, because otherwise I will just go on and on. For those of you whom I went into excruciating detail about stuff, I apologize. And I also apologize to anybody for whom there was something you saw on a shelf and I breezed past it and barely mentioned it. There's just only so much time. If there was something that you saw on a shelf and you want to hear more about it, you'd love to see a history video or see me talk about it somewhere else then please leave a comment below, let me know what took your fancy, what was interesting, and any other thoughts you've got about the hobby, hobby room here. Yeah. As I say, this video was voted for by my patrons. They wanted to find out a little bit more about what happens here behind the camera at the Sorcerer's Tower. I run a new vote every single month for a different topic, a priority video that my patrons want to see sooner rather than later. I'm currently working on a Fury of Dracula board game history and a Battle Retort, a narrative let's play using Warhammer Quest, the original 1995 version, and they were voted for by my patrons. There's always something new on there. I'm provide updates every single month about the status of the channel and things that I'm working on. I provide access to exclusive research interviews with some of the legends of games design that I've spoken to. And I also put my experiments on there. So things like a new hobby bench podcast that I'm currently trialing, you get early access to that via my Patreon page. And of course, there is the live Jordan Sorceries GW Books Club book chat. So every single month, my patrons can join me in a live chat where we talk about the latest book in the GW book series that we're reading that month. This time, it's Drakenfels, and that'll be coming up at the end of September. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. It was fun to give people a bit of an insight into just my collection that I've got here, some of the stuff that's here that inspires me to make these videos and to share my love of all of these games and Games Workshop history. <laughs> for now, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. I am Jordan, and this is Jordan Sorcery. Good girl, Martha. Thank you for letting me pretend that this was my room for a day. It's really not. <laughs>